Today on the workbench, we have the Panasonic R8, made in Japan in 1964. The sticker on it only said doesn't work, so let's give it some batteries and see what's going on. Interesting feature. And absolutely nothing. Not a pop, not a click, nothing. All right, let's open it up and see what we can do. I did notice the scotch tape holding this edge together and the dent here. And I saw some old photos of one of these and this piece is supposed to be underneath this piece. So I think this thing took a tumble at some point in the last 60 years. So hopefully we can fix it. Let's see. Let's get it open. Well, there's your problem. That's not gonna work. It's all corroded. I wonder if that's the same side that took the tumble. No, it's the other side. It looks like it just got corroded off. Okay, let's bypass the battery with some bench power and see what else is going on. Well, that sounds hopeful. All right, you know what? I think we can fix this thing. Weak stations and uh, obviously a lot of noise, but it's hopeful now. Let's get it apart and uh, change out these caps and see what else we can do. Obviously we have to repair this as well. I did manage to find the Sam's Photofact for this radio, uh, made in August, 1964. We have the Panasonic R8 and there's the radio. And the electrolytic caps. Looks like there's four of them. Not too bad. Let's get started. Looks like the bigger the radio, the more the screws. All right, we got it apart. Here's the schematic for the radio. It shows the four electrolytics we'll be replacing. And there they are, one, two, three, four. Let's mark them. This will help us get the new ones in with the right polarity. Just to make my life easier, I'm gonna unsolder the speaker. That way we can keep all this plastic away from the hot soldering iron. Now let's put this in a safe place. Let's get the new ones in. Did I get one side? Doesn't feel like it. I think I'm way off. So I'm having a lot of trouble finding out where this guy is. So I'm thinking of just cutting him out. Because he's so packed tight in there, I can't figure out where he is. Well, he's out now. Now I just have to figure out where I pulled him from. Well, that took a while. After cutting this guy out, it took forever to figure out where the cutoff leads were. But I finally found him. I'm ready to put in the new one. One side is completely buried inside of all this mess. Can't even see. Well, the good news is the rest will be easier. Now let's get him in.
So now moving on, the rest are much easier because they're near the edge and they're easy to find. Like this guy, I mean, he just has to be here and here. Let's get this first guy out. That will help us find the second one too. Well, that was a lot easier. What do we got? We got the 100. But before we put the 100 in, let's take out this other guy where we can still see him pretty easily. Here he is. He's the 33. So let's put the 33 in first. 33, negative to the left here. Being such a big radio, everything is such a tight fit. And now the hundred. This one's easy. You can see right where the leads are. It's got to be him and probably right here. A lot of solder there, but we'll figure it out. We got him too. It's another 33. Negative is down, which totally makes sense. Well, should we test the caps? It's always fun. Here's the one microfarad I had such a hard time finding. About one microfarad, but the ESR of over 40 means it is completely toast. This is the uh, 33, at least one of the 33s. And he's double and ESR 7.4. It's important to know that these capacitances aren't really correct. When they get way above the reading like this, it's not really measuring the capacitance. It's measuring the fact that it's leaky. Yeah, this is the another 30 indicating that it's very leaky. And finally, the 100. <laughs> yeah, okay. Nominally 200, but totally toast. 
And that's why the caps are replaced after 60 years. All right, that's all the caps. Now let's look at this battery problem. So he is utterly corroded and basically broke out. So I've seen this in the past and I don't think there's much saving this guy. I think we need to find fresh wire. Hopefully it'll be long enough. All right. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm a sucker for changing out these old speakers. This looks very straightforward, so let's do it. Speakers degrade over time, just like the capacitors. The magnet's not the same as it was in 64, and the paper isn't the same. Speaker deck has improved a lot in 60 years. They just sound a lot better. New one's a perfect fit. Now let's put all those screws back in. And he goes under to build it properly. Before we do the final test, I did some research on what this hidden compartment is. It's for storing cigarettes, a handy feature in 1964. Well, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I'll be making more. And if you see something I missed, please leave a comment. I'm here to learn. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.